Chat, 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 chat. So for those of you that forgot, in the last instance of the series, your Montreal Expos were slept in the World Series by the New York Mets. A feat that not even, uh, not even happened to occur to Colorado. I didn't get swept. You certainly did. So does it really matter that you made it to the World Series? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think it does. But with that, we do move on. Well, of course I didn't make it, Frank. I ran into the Mets. If you guys ran into the Mets in the uh, in the first round, you would have lost too, clearly. <laughs> uh, no retirements from either player or from either team. No players from either side. Freddie Freeman. Frederick. Way to go, Freddie. Making the Hall of Fame. 292 career average. 2,600 hits in his 20-year career. Good stuff for Freddie Freeman there. So with that, we do get into an interesting situation here. Now, I was very well tempted uh, to, again, try to move the Rockies, but unfortunately, I'm having a lot of difficulty trying to download stuff off of the Logo Vault. I don't know why. So the Rockies will probably stay throughout the entirety of this series. Um, I don't know. Maybe eventually we'll move them. That said... If I'm not mistaken, chat, I uh, had the superior draft last time, which means I get to look for my new manager first. Hello, Juan Bayer. Contact speed, discipline break. Good Lord. Well, I know who my manager is going to be, although Killian Hooley. Discipline bunting. Eh. Drag bunting, but plus two. Ooh, big increase to the pitching, but to lose drag bunting. Reggie Katamer or Juan Bayer. The problem is Juan's only, I mean, Juan's old. That's the problem. Juan is old. So I might have to hire somebody else sooner rather than later. But Juan's a tremendous coach. And honestly, or a manager, I should say, and to be honest, I have a legitimate shot at winning a World Series this year. So uh, we're going to go for it. We are gonna go for it for Juan. With that, you guys need a third base coach. And the best available The best available Will Gonzalez is not that bad at all. Is there anybody else who's even close? Rusty Green. Fire Roberts. Now, you guys could make that call. You could fire Roberts. Going to go for Gonzalez here. He was the youngest of the bunch. You could fire Dave Roberts after some of the controversial calls he made in the, uh, in the playoffs. He's your best option, though, in terms of stats, by far. But I, I would personally keep him. But if there's enough people who are on board with that, let me know. That's it for you guys. We get to the issue of exclusive free agents. So, it's time to pay attention here, chat. Time for you guys to be a little bit more hands-on again, right? In terms of the outfield, you have Benson and Meisner, who you could both let go to try and hope that they get compensation for you. In terms of the outfield, you have Armas, you have Chavez. Derek Gage is ready. You have Tahara, you have Carroll, and then you have Benson and Meisner. If it's me, I know Benson's really solid, especially in terms of an outfielder. He's got a cannon of an arm, and I know Meisner, same thing. Great defensive option, but at 30 and 31 years old, it might be the right time to try and let those guys go and get those big money contracts elsewhere. Because you're having to worry about player development now at this stage, too. Especially, again, with Derek Gage on the up and up. So catcher's on board with letting him go. Again, I wouldn't hate that idea. Try to let them go already. Well, you can try again. So there's that decision to be made. And as well with the starting pitching. Libertore and Shim. It looks like we're going to try to let the outfielders go. Libertore and Shim are both in the same spot. 
Libertoria was awful in the playoffs. I'm sure you guys are going to try to let him walk. James Shim was your best pitcher this year. But if you let those two go, Bowers, Vela, Silk, Ponce, Mitchell. And then in the minors, Chavez, Priester, Glenn Edmondson. So I'm 99% sure Libertore is gone, but you have that decision with, uh, with Shim. Where it could be Bauer, Shim, Vela, Silk, Ponce, Mitchell. Which is great. So what do you guys think? Uh, Libertore, Shim, both gone, both stay. What are you thinking? So we will go ahead and qualify Meisner. We will qualify Will Benson. And hope that they both leave. Libertore, I'm not seeing any objections. So I think again, we'll hope that those three go, because otherwise the money is going to go pretty fast. But you guys also have almost $190 million to spend. The big question is James Shim. So again, if you keep Shim, it's Bauer, Shim, Vela, Silk, Ponce, and Mitchell as your six, which is pretty good. Looks like there was a lot of support here for Shim. Uh, in that case, Shim is going to cost you about $16 million a year. Obviously, the longer the deal, the more interest he has. And obviously, too, if you guys want to sign him a century for the rest of his career, we go 15 years, give him a player option, backload that shit, and save money long term. And honestly, that gets it down to eight and a half a year. Yeah, this gets it down to eight and a half a year. If you give him the 15 year player option backloaded contract. So then at that point, even if he does decline in a very sharp manner, he's not gonna be all that expensive. Are we good with this idea of offering him as little as possible with the interest meter being as high as possible? Because we are still able to just bring this deal down. Two years at 18. I mean, that's the thing, right? You can sign him long term and know that, okay, he might decline and take up money towards the end of his career, or you can sign him short-term and have to pay him a crap load of money. The problem is, how many other options are for the best? I mean, you could front-load the deal if you wanted to, yeah. I mean, Pyro, it's the same thing, though, right? Like, it depends on when you think he's going to retire. If you backload a 15-year deal, though, like, you're, you're going to be golden, you know? So I can't quite get it down all the way to 8.5, but... Even then, it'd be about 10. Right at about 9.9 .9 million per, $148 million. I mean, if you backload it, like I said, by the time you're paying him big money, he would have been retired, more than likely. Are we doing 15 more years? He's not going to make it 15 more years. He's 30. He's not playing until he's 45. So... If we front on it, we'll pay him less further in the deal. I mean, yeah, but it also, Pyro, I mean, if it's a 15-year deal, you're going to be paying him a decent amount of money. This is the better way to go about it. He's going to retire before you start paying him a ton of money. So. Could be the next Bartolo. That's not going to happen. I'm not seeing any major objections to this. Again, it'll save you money. In the short term, which again, you guys just made it to a World Series. We might only have one more season. So it makes sense to try and save as much money right now over the next couple of years to keep these teams as competitive as possible because we might be done with this very, you know, very soon. Yeah, apparently you guys aren't a contender, by the way. There we go. So that'll go through. We'll also qualify just to make sure. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully Meisner, Benson, and Libertori leave. For myself, I have a few more decisions to make than you do. Seth Beer and Benito Osuna. So when a player retires, you don't have to pay the rest of the deal. Pretty sure you don't, no. He retires, he's off the books. Beer and Osuna. I don't know if Benito Osuna would actually get me compensation. I might just have to let him go. So my outfield would be Chen, Boyce, Tucker, and Borden. 
That's not bad. Seth Beer pretty much has to go. I just don't know if he'd actually fetch me compensation because he didn't last time. Osuna last year had an 823 OPS. What is he looking to make? Six mil. That's not bad. But it's just I don't have the depth. I'm going to be playing him in the minors. Hmm. Again, I got to think about the future here. Seth Beer was one of my better players in the regular season, too, but I got to think about the future. <sighs> Damn. All right. And really quickly as well, for relievers, it makes all the sense in the world to still keep Yamamoto. And for starters, Anthony Torres, Pringle, Ashcraft, Donaldson. Lions, my god, Cedeno is definitely gone. It was Cedeno and Donaldson. Honestly, the argument could be let go of Donaldson. Because <laughs> I have Lions, I have Batson. How much money do I need? But then Batson could be the man. That would be sick, though, with long relievers. All right, Barney Torres, first and foremost, you got to come back, buddy. The longer the deal, the better in his mind, too. I'm going to be paying two guys like aces, which is scary as shit. But if it goes through, it would be nice. I'm going to drop it down to $130 million a year. Or, you know, just $30 million a year. For Barney Torres, really investing in my pitching. Seth Beer, or not Seth Beer, but Adrian Donaldson wants 18 and again, he's in the same instance of the longer deal, the better. How much can I reduce that deal by? We're in a very interesting spot now where both teams are having to pay a good amount of money to players. And how it's going to affect us if we make the right moves at the right time is going to really decide how this plays out. And I don't have the answer to how it's going to play out. Oh, I wish there was a faster way to reduce this offer, though. This is very uh, EA NHL like. Uh, let's go 14 million a year. Seth Beer, you gotta go. I hate to say it, you gotta go. He's only looking for 5 million a year. But the problem is just can I afford to spend that much money on depth? I wanna keep Chris McWilliams. Same thing. Try to backload this bad boy. Doesn't get that many Ks. Gives up some walks, but he doesn't allow hits and he doesn't allow home runs as a breaking ball pitcher at cores, which is huge. Yeah, Mac, I mean, that's what it is, right? Is trying to emphasize allowing the, uh, the younger players to get time. Wow, that went down really fast in terms of the interest meter. Let's go 4.5 million per. All right, I think I have to try to let go of Beer and Osuna. Osuna, I don't think anyone will sign him and, and allow there to be compensation, though. Beer, there's a chance of compensation. Osuna, I don't think there is, and Cedeno is going to go, too. So we'll qualify Seth Beer. If he stays, that's fine, but I will be losing Dominique Cedeno. 145 starts, 42 and 72 record. 999 innings pitched with a 4.49 ERA. Benito Osuna, 18 or I should say 818 hits with me. 265 average. He's been solid, but it's just time for him to go. And if Seth Beer were to leave, uh, almost a thousand hits with the club. 266 average for Beer. So. Oh, man, we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see how this plays out. And then again, for you guys here, if Cameron Meisner were to leave 878 games in Montreal. Fanboy! The man was a fanboy! Void, thank you for the 30 months. I will never tell you how to unsubscribe, sir. Much like Netflix, you're trapped for life. Uh, and then Will Benson, 898 games of the club, a 239 average. 
so never major hitters at the plate. Labor Torre, 212 career games, a 4-4-3 ERA, yikes. So I put two points left for the monthly reward. All I have in the collection is for 15. Do I have to finish the collection? You do have to finish the collection. So if you didn't get certain players, be ready to spend. Let's see how this plays out, everybody. Scary moments here with big money on the line. Buyers on as my manager. Gonzalez rejected you guys as a hitting coach or a third base coach, I should say. He went as a hitting coach. So in terms of the contract, Shim accepted. And in terms of the contracts for me, the other players have accepted as well. So I got my pitchers back. We'll see what happens with those bottom three. Let's see if we can get you guys that best third base coach available. Which, I don't know who that would be at this stage. It'd be Rusty. Let's go for Rusty Green. Again, the problem is these other guys are old, but that's okay. Yeah, in terms of the uh, in terms of the transactions, again the expos get James Shim signed for life, and the Rocks get Torres, Donaldson, and McWilliams all back. Muted. What's going on, buddy? It's good to see you. Uh, I have two tops now. Series players. I should be able to get two from those. If they're from last month, yes. If they're from this month, I think they still go in too. But all right. Each team, I mean, I'm dropping two players outright in Cedeno and Osuna, trying to get something for beer. You guys are trying to get something for all three of those guys. Muted, I'm doing good, dude. No complaints. And Green's on as Expos coach. So with that, we'll focus on the Expos first and foremost. And in terms of contracts to work out, uh, Derek Ramirez needs to be signed. We're gonna go three years at 2.8. Sponsorships get you uh, some extra funding in franchise. Let's go 2.8. 2.8 for Amira. Shell, yeah, I mean, I uh, I had the same issue where I accidentally got rid of some tops moments cards from last month and had to spend some money that I didn't really want to spend to get that collection done. But what I've used of the Buxton so far, he's worth it, so. Again, that'd be what, 2.5 for Luther Duke. To get him back. Oops, that went fast. And then Julian Chavez. I imagine you guys just want to let Julian go. He has been in free fall over the past two to three years now. Absolute free fall. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to even make an offer to Julian Chavez. I think it's probably best for you guys to let him go. So, I mean, again, in terms of the outfield, you tried to let go of Benson. Meisner, Devs, take it easy, buddy. It's Benson, Meisner, and Libertore. And I was looking to drop Benito Osuna, Seth Beer, and uh, the starter, Dominique Stania. First year playing MLB, I have diamond players in all position but center field. I need him. He's a good fit for sure. All right, so you guys are saying drop Chavez at second. Leaves you with one natural second baseman and Eric Carvajal. And then for the actual, I mean, in terms of the, the 40 man, like you look fine. It's not showing me any players I should be worried about you losing. Uh, but then in terms of the whole tender contract options, in right, Thomas Ness needs to come back. Valentin needs to come back. Micah Enfield. Those are your three natural right fielders at this stage. I think Libertori is going to get signed. It's a risk. I mean, if he stays, it's for one year. The good thing is you guys don't look like you're totally screwed if he comes back. Uh, Bernardo Chavez, let's get that down to a one-year deal. Save some money. When does he start getting mad? Right there. Derek Gage needs to come back. Rocco Treyer is yours. Stacy and Harrington are not. Shortstops. Hoff is not yours. Third base, Holdridge. Very much yours. Drop him down to two years. Save some money. Spear is also yours. Warren is not. Second base, you're fine. First base, Lucas Ashley. One of, if not the biggest busts in this series for either one of us right now. Lucas Ashley just <laughs> never developed. 
Sign Albert, Delgado, or Pena, not there. For closers, Felipe Salazar. Needs to be re-signed. Again, try to save some money here. Rufus Rios. Drop him down to a one-year renewable deal. Uh, Esteban Cortez is also yours. Same thing. Save some money. Heck, can be signed. Prado is yours. Von Trowbridge. Jose and Ben Calderon. For relievers, Dante Nielsen, who was your Rule 5 pickup last year. Got him on a two-year renewable. Hidalgo is yours. Lewis Davis is yours. So let's see. It's North who's not there. Davis, Hidalgo, Nielsen. So we're looking for Santana or Castilla. There is Castilla. And there is Santana. With that, Pippinger. What a name. We go over to starters. Tom Bowers, last year's Rookie of the Year. Obviously, you want him back. Anthony Mitchell, three-year renewable deal. Chavez, let's go two-year renewable. Save some money. Edmondson. Aguilar is also yours. John Sisk. Marcus Thomas. Let's rework that deal, Thomas. Save some money. Santana. Benito Santana is actually not yours. Let's see if I got to write his name down. No, he is there. Okay, see, that's why you double check. Uh, I was gonna say he was too good to be a rando. William Rich. William Rich is uh, your second oldest starting pitcher on roster behind Duncan Ponce. Mark Burdett is yours. Randy Yamamoto is yours. Casho is not. Scott is, and Francisco Silva, it's also yours. All right, cool. So that's it for your roster then. I'll, I'll still pay attention to the Rule 5, you know, the 40 man requirements, but it doesn't look like you're going to lose anybody. Whereas I have to put Bob Keen at bare minimum on my 40 man to avoid losing him. He's been one of my bigger disappointments. Doesn't look like I'm losing anyone else. In terms of arbitration, Mr. Pringle. Yeah, I really can't afford to pay him $12 million a season right now. I'm paying two pitchers $30 million each. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, but it's cores, and I need dominant starting pitching unless I were to move the team. Let's go 3.4 for Pringle. And again, especially since you guys made it to the World Series. The odds are this series ends with one of us winning the World Series within the next two to three seasons, tops. 4.4 uh, for Russ Gore. I have two star caliber catchers now. That's crazy. Colorado Dodgers, pretty much. Just drop that down to 4.4. That's all you're getting, buddy. And I wish it was sometimes a faster way. Lower digits, Daniel Yamamoto. One year at five mil. It's a help or hurt to set to rotation. Uh, I mean, if I were to set him to rotation, it would hurt if I don't play him as a member of the rotation. So, let's go five million for Yamamoto. Chauncey Lyle I was very disappointed in this past season in the playoffs. We're going to keep him, obviously. 2.8 for Chauncey. Jarrett Gutu. Uh, ooh, I think I'm going to let go of Jarrett Gutu. He's a 74 at 30 years old. He wants $3 million per. I'm going to be dropping Jarrett Gutu. I got no reason to keep a player like that. So, Jarrett, hate to tell you, you're out of here. And then Tommy Kilpatrick as well at 29 years old. He is regressing. He wants $3 million. That's not going to happen. So Tommy Kilpatrick, who was the first left fielder I ever selected. I'm going to be dropping he and Gutu because no. And in terms of contracts, in right, Steve Alfaro, Dave Lefebvre, Rincon is not mine. Center, Joey McKenna, who never developed. Danny Trimble. J. 
Jesus. I might as well just sign into that, whatever. And then Fuentes isn't mine. Yeah, Fuentes isn't mine. It had to be Watts. And left, Steven Chen, who will pretty much be my new starting left fielder. Dudley Boys, shout out to the Dudley Boys, get the tables. Uh, Harold Kirkpatrick. Uh, I don't actually know how much money you want, sir. Mm, he's a decent depth option. I'll pay him that much. Kenny Hanawell is mine, as is Lance Perkinson. Shortstop, Alexi Ordonez needs to be brought back. Bob's your uncle. And Luis Marte is not mine. He's 36 years old. Carlo Collado, who will probably be making the Major League roster this year. Domingo Guzman. Bravo's not mine. Second base, Jared Engel. Who I think was my Rule 5 pickup last year. Save some money there. Barney Kaminsky is mine. Cam Ramos is mine. First base, Jake Lasato needs to come back. Justin, don't call him Scoot Tatum. Hank Mansfield as well, a real bust of a pick for me. Apparently he has like no interest in coming back, but there we go. Just sign him. He's a you know, roster player in the minors. Jason Tenney, Dwayne Burns. Get you guys to come back. And then for closers, Robbie Girard is mine. Pete Maddox, Charlie Brown, Junior Gill, and Bryce Bauer all need to come back. For relievers, Russ McDermott it was a Rule 5 pickup for me. Tom Cheng, Jose Guerra, Tim Gross, Jay Duncan. Let's see, we have six relievers. That's, who am I missing? A Rojo, who's already signed. Cool. Now for starters, Spencer Batson. Oh, good for you. Jessica Best. Thank you for the follow. I do appreciate it. It's Arizona beat San Jose. Poor San Jose. Let's sign Batson. Ronaldo Dawson needs to come back. Sign him for a little bit more. Vladimir Ruiz. Get you on a renewable, Robert Staples. Save some money and get you on a renewable. Romeo Hippern, same thing. Hartley is mine. Pedroza, Lee Pedroza is mine. Antonio Guerrero, John Ortiz, and Chris Valenzuela. Cool beans. So now uh, for both of us, it's pretty much just a matter of waiting. It's a matter of waiting. And when it comes to free agency, I mean, for starters, nobody we let go is like way up there. So that's scary. That's pretty scary. In the outfield, Seth Beer is not the best uh, in left. And in right, Will Benson's the second best right fielder available. So we'll see how it plays out. Sepulveda ends up going over to the Braves, a 93. Of course, at this stage, for the most part, it's going to be a lot of unfamiliar names. Josh Naylor, though, goes to the Giants. All right, makes you wonder how we're looking here, but let's keep going. Mackenzie Gore gets a big-time deal from the Nationals. Papirski? Luis Gill. Harold Tony. We're waiting to see some of those big names. Will Benson has been signed by the Atlanta Braves. That guarantees you guys compensation for him. But say goodbye to one of your star players over the past few seasons. Will Benson is off to Atlanta. Gets $11 million a year for the next four years. Evan Skoog. What a name. Nick Plummer. I was hoping to hear about Seth Beer. And in terms of contracts, offers, still waiting on a lot of offers here. Let's wait it out. Benson was 30. Cameron Meisner has declined his qualifying offer and has elected to remain a free agent. So Cameron Meisner is done with you guys. You're not going to get anything for him, but Cameron Meisner is also gone. Matthew Libratore, however, says, I'm not done with you fuckers. Matthew Libratore has accepted that qualifying offer, and he is back with the Expos. Seth Beer is also now back with the Rockies. 
So both of us kind of get screwed trying to play the qualification game. With at least one big money deal coming back to both sides. So for the Rockies here, I'm still waiting to see what happens with Russ Gore. In terms of the offers tenured, I have six dudes left that are holding out right now. So we'll see how that plays out. It's November 18th, so we still have time. And then for the Expos, you're just waiting to hear from Aguilar, and that's it. So you guys are looking good. Armenteros on the move. All right. Kyle Wright, Nate Lowe goes to Pittsburgh. The Expos have too many players. I always forget to double check that. So time to cut some of the random filler players that we always bring in. Look for the oldest. Pretty much free and clear to cut all these guys. It's just all the massive relievers that we bring in. Now, yeah, catcher, fair enough. I, mean, I don't think anyone's going to sign Meisner, though. So maybe you will still get something for him. Fair enough. I, was, I misspoke on that one. But uh, you're not going to get you're not going to get anything too crazy. And the good thing is he's off your roster, which is what you wanted. He's off your roster. So, if you get something for him, cool. He's an 88, though. Well, he hasn't signed yet. That's the problem. Did we do round two? Uh, yeah, dude, we're, we're in the offseason already. Angels was 13 nothing, lost 14 to 11. Nice. All right, arbitration we've already offered. Texas claimed Bravo off waivers. I mean, whatever. That's not even a player of ours. Danny Jansen on the move to Atlanta. Atlanta's going for it. Shirts and Apostles on the move. Austin Riley goes to Tampa. So for the Expos, it's just Aguilar that's holding out on you. It's paying more money. He's pretty much guaranteed to sign for the Rockies. Arbitration's taken care of. It's just Robbie Girard now that's holding out on me. Paying more money and we're golden. Bubba Thompson to the Rays, Steel Walker to the Reds, Maciel to the Marlins. A lot of big moves here. So I'm still waiting to hear from Robbie Girard. You guys are completely signed. So the Expos roster is set with the exception of the Rule 5. I'm going to offer Girard more money. He still hasn't signed. What the fuck? I mean, he's been offered a deal, so I shouldn't lose him, but like, goddamn. There it is. Cameron Meisner goes to Kansas City. He did end up signing $17 million a year for the next four years from Kansas City. So in terms of compensation, I think you guys are going to be looking pretty good. I think you're going to be looking pretty good. All right. We look okay. So with that, I will get the old raffle system set up because it is about time for the Rule 5. Again, it'll be one pitcher and one position player. It'll be a big help at this stage for both sides to help kind of replenish after we've had to move on for, you know, from some players here. So... Uh, again, it is in chat, Rule 5. Again, subs have slightly better odds as a thank you for supporting. But it's Rule 5 in chat. With that, we are free and clear to sim to said Rule 5 draft. Let's see what we're dealing with at that stage. So here we go. The Rockies have the 27th pick. The Expos dead last at 30th. So let's go ahead here. Couple, wow, quite a few players taken. It makes you wonder who would have been available to us. So again, I'm going to take a full look here. I'm going to take a full look here at everything. All right? So pay attention. Right? Pay attention. I'm going to look at this guy for the moment. He'd be a pretty big risk pick, but just in case somebody wanted to see what he looks like. Uh, let me go back over here. 
So, again, I will break down pretty much every player that's worth selecting for a pitcher and for a position player. Please have in mind a short list of players you might want to pick up in case you are the one selected so we can do this in a somewhat timely manner. So looking here first, I mean, I have to look at my roster first, but just to go over it. For catchers, if you were to take one, which you guys know you don't need one, also apparently Dwayne Burns, who is my catcher, is available, but I'm not exactly upset about that. Um, it didn't tell me he was even available, so hopefully my guy is not selected. If he is, I'm going to get him back because that's bullshit. It didn't tell me that he would have been available. But um, and actually, hold on. Okay, it doesn't look like we lost anybody else. That's weird. Either one of us. So for catchers, if you were to take a catcher, Eric Goodwin is your best bet. But again, neither of us really need a catcher at this stage. So he's the only one there. First base, Kevin Yorman. <laughs> is without a doubt the best first baseman available 27 79 overall if you're to take a first baseman with your pick kevin yorman is the guy nobody else is really worth the pick i mean hauser's 65 at 27 he's not going to make it second baseman if you were to take somebody your best bet would likely be eric casilla or russell green slightly lower down in terms of overall is keith navarre also sherwin darden so um, again, I don't know if you guys need a second baseman. You technically only have Carvajal, but you'd be looking probably at one of those guys. Third base. If you were to take a third baseman, there's no doubt about it. Broderick, Broderick Waterman is the guy. 27B and a 79. Broderick Waterman. You also have Tom Irving, Peter Hara, and then again, like Bo Matson's there, but the odds he develops are slim. And even if you get him, he won't be ready until he's like at least 27, probably. Maybe 26 at the earliest, he'll be a mid-70s. So um, that's a guy where it's like you'll get him at his peak, but it'll be for like one or two years. And that's like, well, what's even the point? But no doubt Broderick Waterman's the best position player so far. Shortstop, Oliver Lopez. Problem with him, he's only a C potential. But 23C and a 75, defense first. Oliver Lopez, aside from him, I mean, Dusty Medley, no great shortstops here from the looks of it. And the outfield, Freddie Link looks to be the best available, or Cesar Fernandez at 26 B and a 76. He is probably the better option over Freddie Link in terms of pure potential. In center field, Bruce Erasmus, 23 C and a 76 is the best center fielder available by far. So if you were to go that option, Bruce Erasmus would be your guy. And in right, honestly in right, it's 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 pretty poor. Again, just based off of the ages and player regression this year. So it's kind of a tough pick there for position players. For pitchers, Hank Landis, 28B and a 79. You wouldn't get him for that long, but you do have Sandy Gaston, 27B and a 79. It's not bad. You also have Josh Wirth, 27B and a 78. Aside from that, I mean, 26C and a 78, Kirk McMillan. I mean, it's not bad. You guys probably do need a starting pitcher more than I do at this stage, so this is pretty important. Leo Sandoval, 25B and a 77 is not bad at all. You also have the same thing in Pedro Espinoza, 25B and a 77. Chris Quisenberry, 24C and a 77. Grimsley again, another 25B, 76. A lot of starters available here. It looks to drop off from there though. So quite a few starters available. For relievers, Al Nieve, he's 28, but B and a 79. Aside from that, Tommy Chandler, only a C, but he's 26, 79 overall. Esteban Moreno is 27, a 78B potential on him. Andreas Lerma, 26B and a 77. So a little bit better option than Chris Casto, who I think was a Bruins AHL defenseman back in the day. Shout out to Chris Casto. Kevin Wagner as well. So there are some decent relievers here. 23C and a 75, Manuel Hidalgo, who belongs to one of us. So I'm going to have to be careful that we don't lose anybody here. Uh, that whole, hey, you might lose these guys thing really screwed us over. And then for closers, Jose Mota, 29B and a 79. 
You have Frank Gill, 27C and a 77. Junior Santos, 27B and a 76. 26B and a 76, or 75, is Patrick Thorman. So there are some players available. Charlie Brown as well, who's mine, who again, let's not try to fuck each other over here because we both got fucked. And then again, like I said, there's Alejandro Cabrera at center. He's high risk though. Like I know that A potential is enticing, but he's 23. He is like eight overall points away minimum from being useful at the major league level. So at best, he's he's major league level at 25, 26 years old. Which means you get him for like three to four years tops before you have to start worrying about regression. Is that worth the risk? Same thing with Tom Garce at second base. It's high risk, high reward. Is it worth the risk? Well, that's, that's up to you. So... But again, you, you are a team that just went to a World Series, so you're not really thinking about later, you're thinking about what can I do now to get us to that next level. I mean, granted, you are thinking about later if we get to another draft. That said, I really don't need another starter. I really don't. I'd have no room for him on my roster to take a starter, so if I take a pitcher, it's a reliever. And even then, I'm kind of stacked when it comes to relief, so I might look elsewhere. For my pick here, I'm stacked at catcher. I'm good at first base for sure. Second base, I could use, I guess, a little bit of infield help. Waterman has secondary positions. Uh, AJ, I mean, it probably will end as soon as one team wins, unless we say, hey, let's go for more. Uh, for me, I, I don't think there's any choice. I am going to be taking third baseman, the easy pick in terms of position players. I'm going to be selecting Broderick Waterman with this uh, first pick here for me of the Rule 5, my position player. So for the Expos, you've seen all the players. You know who's available. The pick belongs to Broken Wheelchair. Wheelchair, what's it going to be? What are you thinking? You should pretty much have a name in mind outside of Waterman, who you were looking at. If you at least adhered to my request. He's going to defer to chat, fair enough. Especially with Waterman off the board. Especially with Waterman off the board. So. I mean, again, now you get a look at your roster too here. Really quickly, let me run through this. So for your roster, in theory, you do have room for a starting pitcher. But, I mean, Ponce and, and Mitchell, you might have to sacrifice somebody to get that starter onto the roster. If you take a starter, Ponce or Mitchell probably goes down to AAA. If you take a reliever, you have North, you have Nielsen. You have more room for a reliever. No matter what, if you take a pitcher, for both of us, somebody good has to go to the minors to make it happen. In terms of your catchers, again, you could look for that slight upgrade on Delgado. First base, you don't have a natural backup first baseman, so Kevin Yorman could certainly be your guy there. Second base, you have Carvajal. You could look for a depth option. But, of course, third base, you also have Jones and Holdridge. But, again, Irving uh, can play first and second. Hara can play first. And in shortstop, it's not great with Lopez, but you do have Garcia, Ramirez, Abanez. So, and in outfield, obviously, it's, it's Armas, Chavez, Gage, Tahara, Carroll. Like, you guys are still stacked despite losing two <laughs> strong outfielders. So we'll see what... We'll see what you're thinking here, chat. He's going for Yorman. He takes the first baseman. Good answer, good answer. As both teams go with their position player first. I like wheelchairs pick a lot of picking up first baseman Kevin Yorman to back up Michael Chen. And honestly, he might be able to take the spot from Michael Chen in terms of being in a bat. Like, he doesn't have the power, but that contact against lefties especially. Aside from that, nobody else is being picked. Perfect, so we have to go with our Pitching selections here. I can't take a starter. If I take a reliever, I'd have one, two, three, four, five. In theory, six with a Rojo. <sighs> or 
right. There's a chance I'm gonna forego this pick. There's a chance. I don't hate Tommy Chandler, but I mean, I'd have to put a Rojo. One, two, three, four, five. As it is, I'm so stacked. I'd potentially have to, I, I honestly, I'm gonna forego this pick. I don't, I don't need a pitcher. I don't, there's no one here to me that's like this crazy can't miss option that I have to take or I'm screwed. I think I can just let my roster be. So uh, I am going to forego that selection and not take anybody. For Montreal, it has to be a pitcher and the pick belongs to Brits. So Brits, again, it has to be a pitcher, starter, or reliever, it is up to you. You've seen the names, I hope. But yeah, for me, for me, it just isn't there. It just isn't there to make have that pick make sense. I wouldn't be able to keep the guy on the roster. So Mac is calling out Avias. Who I think was a 74, roughly. What was his overall? It's 24A potential. That doesn't help me. I need to know an overall dog. It's not sorted by age. 72, all right. Yeah, there he is, Mariano, 24 A and a 72. High risk, high reward. Good control and velocity, good stamina. I mean, the, the per nines suck. You guys would have to play him as a long reliever this year. You know, is he worth stunting the development or, you know, potential development still further of, of Mitchell? I mean, think you'd have to take a good player off of your roster to make room for him. That's why I didn't take anybody with my pitcher pick. I'd have to take somebody good off of my roster to make room for that guy, and it's just, it's not, it's not worth it. So, I mean, if you take a starter at this stage, you know, you're pretty much resigning to the fact that Ponce or Mitchell would probably be down in AAA this season. Probably both. If you guys were to take a reliever, again, it would be one, two, three, four, five. I mean, there's more of an argument for a reliever, but even then, even then, I mean, you know, Nieve or Mata, are they that big of an improvement? Not necessarily. So, that's, that's the tough call. Yeah, Rule 5 picks have to stay on the Major League roster. You can't send them down. That's the problem. If you take them, you have to play them, or you cut them off of your roster immediately. So, like I said, that's why I didn't pick a reliever, because he wouldn't be able to stay. So. So, again, I mean, Mota and Nieve, the better picks, probably Mota. Or uh, Nieve at this point. Can you name our relief pitchers we'd have this year? Well, I mean, Mac, you can see them on screen. I mean, it's North, you could potentially argue Nielsen, but it's North, Ostrander, Duke, uh, and Drew, Salazar, and then you still have Rufus Rios there. So, I mean, you have six to seven guys, you know, the only, like, the 79s are higher than Nielsen, but Nielsen's also 24. So, how much longer are they going to be better? Chat's arguing for uh, for a skip here, and I don't necessarily disagree. Same move I made. Is that the play? It's a good it's a good sign that we've reached this point where we're just like, huh? Thinking thinking Mota in the worst case scenario, drop him. I mean, Brits, you're not wrong. Like you could take this guy and then. Again, it's you're like, ah, actually, we don't need him. You can just cut him in spring training. So, it's up to you. You can take him if you want to just to get a look at him. That goes for any of them. Again, it's got to be a pitcher here. 
And if it turns out like, ah, oh, yeah, no, shit, we can't keep them. What will it be, Brits? The choice is yours. The choice is yours. He's taking the reliever, Jose Mota. Will it be a long-term addition? It doesn't look like it, but Jose Mota is the selection. Again, we'll see how long he lasts. And the Rule 5 has officially concluded. The good thing is none of our players were picked too, so that doesn't cause any issues. So we are good to skip ahead to old spring training. Malcolm Nunez was selected. i got to move myself off of uh, the high ground, Anakin. Joe Adele to the Diamondbacks. Victor Robles traded to the Mets for Walker Bueller and Roberto Osuna. I wouldn't be a Red Sox fan anymore. Alex Verdugo to the Cardinals. J.J. Blide to the Twins. Darwinson, Hernandez, and Trey Cabbage. Lee Rodriguez on the move. Kevin Maitan on the move. Adam Hazley. Adam Hall to the Mets. I mean, he was there before, but, you know. Paul DeYoung to the Tigers at 36 years old. Manuel Margot to Arizona. Normal contracts. We got nothing, so the spring training... We go, and again now, we're at the stage where it doesn't take that long to set up these rosters. Uh, quickly, let me check the scouts. Uh, and I actually do have a better West scout available, so I'll take the Henry Hudson, what a guy. East. Stick with who I got. All right, cool. And then you have better scouts than I do still at this stage, so there's no way there's gonna be anybody. Yeah, you guys have a fucking unreal scouting department. If we were manually scouting for you guys, your draft information would be incredible every year. It would be unreal. Uh, so with that, I guess we'll, uh, yeah, we'll set up the Expos first. So one, two, three. Uh, let's go four, five, and six. Two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, it doesn't take as long to set this up anymore. Three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Four, five, and just sign on some depth. And then for your starters, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You guys are good. You got plenty of depth there. Uh, so now it's just the same thing. Sign some relievers. Honestly, we could have probably gone like seven players per position. But there we go. Your roster's set. So let's take a look. Like I said, this is a much faster process now. So for catchers, it's pretty straightforward. It is Richard Pina and Mariano Delgado once more. No controversy there. Uh, you actually still don't have any like depth. You don't have any depth catchers. It's just those two. First base, Jorman's obviously on the roster. Michael Chen is obviously on the roster. Uh, Lucas Ashley will not be. Send him back down to AAA. He'll technically have to go through waivers. That's not a big deal. He won't get claimed. Uh, but you do have Gary Elbert in the system as well, who, man, outside of Michael Chen, you guys have had trouble developing first baseman, but maybe Kevin Yorman's the guy you needed. Second base again, Carbajal is your only second baseman under contract right now after the departure of Chavez, which is kind of crazy that that's how it played out. But again, one, two, and then one, two, three, four. Just making sure no one's missing. And you guys are actually missing somebody from third. Let me go to... There we go. It's weird that it's under transactions. You guys are missing a player by the name of Ezra Ramirez. Who's apparently with Cleveland. Do you guys care enough for me to like fight to get this guy back? Because let's be honest, he's not going to make it. He's a 51 at 20 years old. I can fight to get him back. I don't know how the hell they even ended up with him. I must have accidentally let him go. 
but I mean, he's trash. He's, uh, he's just, he's never gonna make it. I wouldn't even fight to get him back if it was me, so. <laughs> this is why we double check though. Um, and again, third base, you're pretty much good though. I mean, it's, it's Jones and Holdridge. You got Spear and then Chavez, Kendrick, Bonds. These guys aren't yours. Um, shortstops, Ramirez, Garcia, Abanez. Those are your big three. Again, we'll uh, we'll see how it plays out in terms of who's actually on this roster this year. And then the outfield's even more interesting because Derek Gage is still rocking a 76. There is an argument to not play him this season. Now, Harrington's not yours. Everybody else, though, will bump up. And if someone's above a 70. And then it's in the middle here. Pins is yours. Whoops. Have him and double can gauge play first. I will double check secondary positions and stuff like that in a moment. And then Thomas Ness definitely wouldn't be in the majors. Enfield is yours. He'd be in, say, double, and then these guys would be down in single. Let me just check what the numbers would be on that in theory. But I mean, Tahara, Carroll, Armas, and Chavez in the outfield isn't that bad. Gage can only play the outfield. Chavez can only play the outfield. Armas can play the corners. None of your outfielders can play the infield. So Derek Gage might be stuck in AAA for one more season. That's kind of the question you have to make. Or you could drop somebody. We'll come back to that in a minute. Hold on. And then for starters, I think you have your six. You could make a decision between, I'll, I'll leave Mitchell there for the moment, but it's pretty obvious that Chavez is going to be sent down. Uh, Quinn Priester is going to be sent down. Marcus Thomas. And of course, these are guys on your 40 man by default to have held on to them. But that's pretty much set. Davis obviously won't be on your major league roster. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh boy. It's pretty obvious that Cortez isn't going to be on. Well, I mean, he's 28. Okay. So, first things first here. I'd say the most important one to cover. Um, would be the outfield. So again, you have that decision to make. Does Derek Gage play the outfield at the major league level this year? You have Armas, you have Chavez, you have Tejera, and you have Carroll. I honestly think if you're going to have him play in the majors, you got to send... I, I don't think you can do it right now, to be honest. I don't think you can. Because again, we're being hands-off at the lineups and allowing the coaching staff to decide it. You can try to, you know, you can put him on the 40 man for now, call him up, see if your coach or if your manager plays him. But I got to be honest here, he doesn't do anything overly special. And even as a DH, like, he's very similar to Chavez and Armas, except a little bit worse. I don't, I, I think he could use that extra bit of seasoning because he pretty much, you know, has to be a he has to be that corner outfielder or a DH and at this stage you kind of got to wait for Chavez or Armas to go so are we good with Gage staying in AAA it looks like it from chat but I don't see if we have any didn't see if we have any ex exceptions but like I said I mean I, I just don't see your manager playing him which means you'd have to drop somebody else to get him to the majors I mean, one more season in AAA for him isn't bad. In theory, he should rip apart AAA. In theory. You never know for sure. All right, we're moving on. Then we get to starting pitching. Now, again, here, it's between Bowers and Mitchell. You tried to get rid of Libertore, and he stuck around. If you do get rid of him, you could keep Bowers to Mitchell on your roster and be fine. You've tried to get rid of Libertore twice. So you could go Bowers, Shim, Vela. That's three. Silk, Ponce, Mitchell as your six. I think it's probably worth it because Shim's better than Libertore historically. I think he just dropped Libertore. He probably will get claimed on waivers because of how good he is, but even then he could be a September call-up. Does Libertori have any options? He actually does have three unused options, so you could send Libertori down to AAA. 
without without risking it. I think that's probably your play to not stunt the development of uh, Ponce or Mitchell or Silk or Vela. You have a very young rotation, a very young rotation. All right, there's the call. Libertore is the man on the outs. He'll go down to AAA. So your starting six will be Bowers, Shim, Vela, Silk, Ponce, Mitchell. Again, the other guys are being sent down. Now in terms of relievers, here's the issue. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. You need to send down some relievers here. You need to, to get down to 26. If you send them down from there, you can afford to keep every player on roster, the shortstops and everything. So it comes down to the relievers then. Um, and again, 2478C, you'll probably keep Nielsen. I think it's fair to say that Hennessy is going down. If there's any contradictions to that, let me know. But I mean, that, that seems to be the obvious one. Lowest overall, the oldest. We'll send down Rod Hennessy. Just waiting for chat to maybe have somebody argue, but going once, going twice, he's going down. Um, what we'll do actually, okay, it did, it did go down to 29. We need to send down three more players. So if you send down three, again, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you technically have six relievers. So what we'll do here, what we'll do is I think we'll go to a straw poll. So you're gonna vote. Take a look at the stats now. You're gonna vote for who stays, okay? So if you want North to stay, it's multiple choice. If you want North to stay, you vote for North. If you want Nielsen to stay, vote for both of them. And the players with the least amount of votes, those will be the guys that get dropped. Can you send down a shortstop? There's really no point. It, it makes more sense to send down a reliever than it does a shortstop at this point. Because again, you don't have five outfielders this year. That's the difference. You're going to need that extra, that extra position option. My opinion, at least. So, we have the names. Who has options? All right, here. So, Dennis North, obviously you wouldn't send him down. You don't, you don't even really have to worry about waivers. If someone gets claimed, I'll just get them back. But, I mean, Nielsen has options. Cortez has options. I think everybody, aside from, everybody aside from Mota can be sent down. You're fine. Again, if you elect to send down Mota, he's off the roster because he was your Rule 5 pickup. So the straw poll's in chat. Again, vote for who you want to stay. It's multiple choice. The least voted on relievers are the ones that get optioned down to AAA. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, that way I can sign my free agent fill-outs here. Four, five, six. That's perfect. Two, three, four, five, and six. Three, four, five, six. Actually, seven. Even better. Three, four, five, six. That's good. Short stops. Three, four, five, six. Jesus, I might not even have to sign anybody. The outfield, it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then sign Mickey Moniak, this dude, and that dude. For starters, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, and then just sign relievers to fill it out. All right, cool. So my roster set up here too. Um, you know, I'll post the link again, give you guys another round. Again, you're voting for what reliever on your team you want to stay. And for the Rockies here, it is going to be, I think, pretty straightforward for me. I definitely have more catchers. But Hernandez, Gore, am I missing someone? Darnell Mosley. I am missing somebody. Darnell Mosley. Where did he go? And is he even worth getting back? I actually might not, I might have drafted him, but not signed him. Ho! Yeah, no, I kind of want him back, Seattle. 
I think I want him back. Like, he's a D potential, but, uh... Yeah, I want him back. Wow, they have, like, no budget either. I'm not going to be able to get him back because of the budget. I mean, he's a D potential. I don't think he'll ever make it anywhere. But literally, they have no money. Like, they can't even afford to pull off this trade. So, uh, yeah, I guess Darnell Mosley, I, I lost him. That's fine. I mean, 72D potentially probably won't make it. That kind of sucks, but that is what it is. But again, we have Hernandez, we have Gore, we have Tenny and Triple A. I guess you and Double A, and then you and Triple, you and Double. Cool. Anarchy, what's going on, buddy? We're doing pretty well. Uh, let's get the results of the voting here about who is off roster. And the moves are official. So first of all, Esteban Cortez will go down to triple. Rios. Rios, least voted upon here as well. So Cortez is out. Rufus Rios is out. And you guys need one more. And shockingly, it's Salazar. I don't make up the votes. Salazar, Rios, and Cortez got the least amount of votes. Your roster is set. Bold strategies, Cotton. Bold strategies. Lineup and rotation will set back to auto. Everything else is uh, is good to go. Very bold strategy there. Oh, and I ended up playing 21 last night. Oh, NHL? Ah, about an hour, hour and a half. We just don't know who's who. You had plenty of time to look, though. So there's no excuse. Like, you had plenty of time to look and sort it out. First base. I got Marte, Marquez, all right, cool, I got my guys. Uh, triple A for you, double A for you, put you in triple, put you in double. Can't keep all of that in our head. It was just for a couple of relievers. Like, it can't be that difficult. They were on the screen for like five minutes. So, uh, I don't know. I don't view that as an excuse. Anarchy, I did get around to some village, and it's a hell of a game so far. All right, that's good. Second base. Jensen. One, two, three. Yeah, we got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, cool. That's good. Jensen, Angle, Kaminsky, and Ramos and Triple. Man, poor Will Shin all the way down to double. You wildly overestimate our memories, apparently. Jensen on the roster, third base. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven outside of Noel. So I need Waterman to be on the roster. I, oof, oof, Morrow. Okay, this is, uh, this is gonna be interesting how I make this work out. Goddamn. Uh, how am I gonna make this work? Especially if Coyado's on the board. That'll be interesting. Short stops. One, two, three, four, five. That's good. Triple A for you. Triple A for Bob Keen. Double A for you. Double A for you. Then in the outfield. Oh, man. All right, I got to add Coyado to the 40 man eventually, so it might as well be now. Call him up to the majors. I have some decisions to make. Good God, Steven Chen. Add you to the 40 man, Dudley Boyce. Add you to the 40 man, Kirkpatrick can actually go down. All right, so one, two, three, four, five in theory works. Their age potential isn't over on the poll. There'll be different outcomes. I mean, maybe, and I'll do that next time. But, again, I feel like, like the problem is, oh, we can't remember who's who. All you have to do is say, okay, the guys, the guys that I don't like are being voted. So just vote for everyone except for the guys you don't like. You don't have to sit here and remember five players. You only have to remember the two or three that you don't want on the team. I don't think it's that difficult to say, chat, you should be able to remember the two guys where you're like, I don't like those two. I don't think that's that difficult. <laughs> Personally. But maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Alright, 
right, really quick and left. One, two, three. We got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That works. Center. We got our three. McKenna. Trimble. I'm actually missing another dude in Franklin Watts. How bizarre. Is he any good? Like, I know my catcher was half decent. Okay, I definitely want him back. And for some reason, he's a free agent. I don't know why the hell he's a free agent. But he is. That's so weird that it would have cut somebody like that for me. Get rid of this guy. Yes, I'd like my center fielder back. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me if I'm wrong here. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm sorry that I apparently expect you guys to be able to remember two names, Mac. You know? All right, and then for the starters. Actually, hold on. Center was good and right. It is Tucker, Board, and LaFave Alfaro. All right, cool. So for starters then, and I might have to just double check that everyone's here. Those are some high expectations. Apparently. It's one, two, three, four, five, and six. My God, I'm going to have to carry seven starters. I'm going to have to. Like the starting pitching that I have available is ungodly. But this is this is absolutely why. It's like we're in cores and I knew like I need starting pitchers. Jose Guerra is obviously not going to be on the roster. Two, three, four, five. I don't know if Gerard's going to be on the roster or Pete Maddox. Fair enough, dudes. Fair enough. I have a full 40 man at this stage. Who's my worst player on the 40 man? Bob Keane. I think we should be all right. All right, so I definitely have to drop some dudes. It's dude dropping time, and we definitely have way too many third basemen. I don't know if I'm gonna carry Dudley boys. Robbie dropping the bits. Here's five dollars and a meme. Well, let's see what that meme is, shall we? What is the? <laughs> See, this is why I like making episodes on Twitch. Because you couldn't get magic like this otherwise. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> That's incredible. Well done. That is incredible. Well done, sir. All right. I hate to say it. I think I got to go off of overall here. So, Robbie Gerard, you're going back down to triple. That means I still have to get five people off of the roster, which means I hate to say it, but even like Russ McDermott's not going to be in the majors this year. Two, three, four, five. I'm probably going to drop one more. I don't think Arojo is going to be in the majors this year either because I'm going to have two long relievers. So I have some incredible bullpen talent in AAA. Aside from that, Thinking Engel and Pena, or I drop Dudley Boyce. One, two, three, four, five outfielders. I think maybe one more season in AAA for Dudley. And then I have to make a decision with those third basemen. Hines can't play short. Collado, Lyle, Waterman can play short. Honestly, I gotta be... <sighs> I gotta be straight up here, like, Hines and Lyle both let me down significantly last year. Hines at the plate was abysmal, like, he's good defensively. I think I'm actually gonna drop Hines and Lyle. Although Engel can play the outfield, really good pinch runner. But do I have anybody else that can play second base if it comes down to injury? I mean, Freeman can and Pena can. I'm gonna go with my gut here. I'm gonna drop Hines and I'm gonna drop Lyle and I'm gonna say screw overall. I'm gonna go off of the results that they showed me. So with that, I think we are pretty much good to go. 
Nobody major was lost off waivers for either of us. Just to double check my roster then. Triple A, triple A double, triple A double double. Triple A, triple A. Let's go double, double and double with Cosmo. That kind of hurts. Picking up Waterman hurt a little bit, but I need to find out what I got with him. I really do, so. Short stops, triples, and doubles. And in the outfield, I guess this is the primary one here that I gotta, I gotta worry about. And we'll see who has the uh, top 50s as well. So. so let's see, Franklin Watts would technically be in double. Trimble would be in double. Can't believe Mickey Moniak's hanging around. And then probably double for those two. Triple A is one, two, three. Let's see. One, two, three, and let's go four with Watts. Double is one, two, three, four, and five. That works. A lot of depth outfielders, apparently. Starting pitching is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four. Fuck. Two, three, four. Actually, four. Wait, fuck. Come on. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, I gotta drop one dude. That works. Then for the relievers, two, three, four, five. Chang will be down in double. This is nuts how much uh, how much good talent both of us really are gonna have in the minors. It's pretty crazy. So triple is one, two, three, four, five, and potentially six. Double is one, two, three, four, five, and six. I think we're good. Double A just needs to drop two players. I don't really know from where. Can just be from the infield. Just drop Uchida. And uh Jose Garcia. Alright, I do believe that we are just about good to go. I gotta double check you guys here for the miners, but for the most part, again, good to go. in the outfield. There's a real short of outfield, but one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, and double is one, two, oh boy. Let's go three, and four. Let's drop Perez down to double, actually, and drop that dude back to single. Then for your starters, it's one, two, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five with Aguilar, six with Sisk. And double A is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you are gonna have some pitchers in single A, but that's just kind of how it's working out. One, two, three, four, yeah, you're good there. So then the relievers are one. Pretty much anybody under a 70 has to go double A. These rosters are going to be something, though. Both of these teams, I think, are very much favorites to make the playoffs again. One, two, three, four, five. Just say one. What are we looking at here? It's double A. Triple A can afford another reliever. So we'll call up uh, Prado because of the potential. And double A is going to drop one dude, which can be Santana. All right, both rosters are officially set. I mean, again, that process is normally even longer. But at this stage, then, we will hit Sim to the beginning of the regular season and see where we stand. So, first and foremost, from here, the Expos are still ranked 26th for whatever you can put into that. I mean, the yeah, Athletics at 9th, apparently. For me, I'm apparently ranked 15th. 
not the best in my division either, but somehow you guys are still very low ranked. I don't quite understand. In terms of scouting, I mean, it shows you with like the 23rd best catching depth, which is ridiculous. But obviously, like third base, second base, you're looking really good. Uh, for myself, looking good at first and in right. Still absolutely stacked and right. In terms of the budget, uh, significantly higher player payroll for the Rockies because I brought my guys to the majors sooner. Let's take a look at the top prospects. The Expos have Derek Gage in 8th. The Rockies have Collado at 10. Mitchell, though, in 11. Aguilar in at 14. Prado at 18. You guys are dominating this prospects list. I have Johnny Cummings at 31. The Expos also have Lucas Ashley, 43rd, even though he's 26. So you guys dominate that top prospects list. And when it comes to your lineup this season, this is your rotation as set. By one Dave Roberts. It is Tom Bowers, the last year's rookie of the year. Now 25 years old. He is your ace. Scotty Vela, James Shim, Napoleon Silk, and Duncan Ponce are behind him, with Anthony Mitchell as the long reliever. The bullpen is, of course, Luther Duke, Jose Mota, Dante Nielsen, Zeke Drew, Arlo Ostrander, and the closer, Dennis North. To no surprise. Your lineup at this stage looks like this, at least against righties. It's Eric Carvajal, Jose Abanez, Frank Jones, Andreas Tejera, Michael Chen, Salvatore Armas, Bernardo Chavez, Richard Pina, and Kevin Yorman in a DH, which means the bench is Corbin Carroll, Darren Holdridge, Mariano Delgado, Eduardo Garcia, and Derek Ramirez. Against lefties, Carvajal, Abanez, Jones, Tejera, Armas, Pina, Yorman, Chavez, and Carroll. So Chen sits out against righties, as does Garcia. So I think Garcia sat out both times, though. So that's the only real difference is that Chen sits for Yorman uh, when you're against lefties. So all in all, I mean, it's a pretty damn strong lineup. You guys have two 90-plus players in Jones and Pina, and the rest of the lineup is honestly pretty damn solid. I mean, Carvajal at an 88 is a freak. It's a damn good team. You know, it's not really a surprise that you made it to the World Series last year, and I could easily see you making it back at this stage. The Rockies lineup looks like this. At least with DH, which obviously we don't often have. But it's James Borden, Austin Marquez, Kyle Tucker, Seth Beer, Andreas Marte, Russ Gore, Tyler Freeman, Broderick Waterman, and Bobby Jensen. With Angle, Collado, Hernandez, Chen and Pena on the bench. And then again against lefties, if I were to have a DH, Borden is in, Collado, Tucker, Beer, Marte, Marquez, Freeman, Hernandez, and Jensen. So I definitely move my players around a bit based off of um, lefty-righty dynamic. The only thing I noticed that I wasn't happy about, and we can go back and look at your lineup, but no matter what happens, Chen wouldn't be a full-time player. The question is, do I trust Harold Kirkpatrick to be there, or would I rather have Chen in case of injury? Is it worth it for Chen to be on the bench or to be a AAA starter? To be honest, I think I'm good with him being on the bench. Because I still think, just off of a hunch, he'll get playing time. Problem is for me is that I'm in a window right now. Kyle Tucker's 33, Seth Beer's 32. And the second those guys go, I have to rely on Chen, I have to rely on Boyce and Borden to carry the weight. So... I really can't afford to get it wrong with Chen, but I think I'm going to trust that he'll be good. And then bullpen-wise for me, it is the 290s, Lee Anthony and Barney Torres. Behind them, Gregory Pringle, Braxton Ashcraft, and Barrett Lyons with Adrian Donaldson and Spencer Batson as long relievers. The bullpen, McWilliams and Alejandro Zapato, who's crawled back. Alongside Malcolm Gonzalez, Daniel Yamamoto, and my closer is going to be Bucky Tate. Bucky Tate. So, I'm a little bit worried about my bullpen. I don't have any, like, ridiculous relievers. But I have an ungodly starting pitching rotation. And that's why I put an emphasis on the rotation. I'm like, man, I play at cores. I need a good outfield. Or a good outfield, I need a good rotation. And that's what I got. <laughs> so, we'll see how it works out this season. I wish, again, there was, like, a power rankings heading into the year. There isn't. Both teams made the playoffs last year. The Expos made the World Series. Will you guys be able to do it again 
It's about who can get to that goal line first of making it to the World Series. And this might be our last season. If, anything, if last season's anything to go off of, this could very well be our last season.